Hi everyone, I hope you're doing really well. Today we're going to be learning about the importance of making a big effort when we come across challenges. Now I have to say again that I am so proud of all of you for the big efforts that you have made all of last term during lockdown. And I look forward to seeing your big efforts achieve success in this current term as well. So, so far in our Big Life Journal, we have been learning about the importance of encouraging ourselves, of saying positive words, in believing in ourselves. We've learnt the importance of speaking positively when we come across challenges. And this is so important for every challenge that you face, whether it's a big challenge or a small challenge. These challenges for you might be the idea of actually coming back face to face to do school in the coming weeks. This difficult challenge could be maybe a maths question. It could be learning a new karate skill, learning how to cook a pizza, learning how to play a new song on your musical instrument. Whatever your challenge is, approaching it with a growth mindset is so important. But there is a most important ingredient to overcoming challenges that we will be learning about today. This most important challenge will guarantee your success. Let's watch a short video together now, because this video shows what this special ingredient is. I wonder, as you watch it, whether you can guess what this special and most important ingredient is. Let's watch together. The little engine that could. There once was a train full of important toys. It was trying to get to the next town over, chugging and huffing and puffing through the countryside, but then it came to a large hill. It tried to go up once and slid back down. It tried again and got farther up this time, but still couldn't make it. It tried yet another time and slid again. The train knew it wasn't going to be able to make it over this hill all by itself. Help, help, the train cried. A large black train rolled up next to them. Please help us, the train full of toys said. We can't make it over this hill by ourselves. The black train took one look at them and said, No, no, I can't help you. I've been busy all day and now I need to rest. And it rolled right off to the train station. The train full of toys waited for what felt like hours. Finally, another train pulled up. This one was big too, definitely strong enough to pull them over the hill. But when they asked for help, this train disappointed them too. Oh no, I can't help! You are far too heavy for me to pull! And it too went straight to the train station. Another train came. And another. And another. All of them looked big enough to pull the train full of toys over the hill, but none of them helped. Then, a small steam engine rolled up beside them. The train full of toys knew that this steam engine was too small and felt so defeated that it didn't say anything. Then, the little engine spoke. Do you folks need some help? Yes, the train said. Let me try, said the little engine. The train wasn't so sure about this one. I'm a very big train. I'm not sure you could pull us. The little engine thought for a moment. It sized up the bigger train and then said, I think I can. So the little engine hooked itself up to the front of the train and began to pull. All the while he said, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. Then the hill got steeper, and the little engine wasn't sure it could go another inch, but it still puffed on. I think I can. And suddenly, after all of that hard work, the little engine's faith in itself paid off. They made it over the top of the hill and zoomed down the tracks and got the train full of toys where it needed to be. And all the while, the little engine said, I knew I could, I knew I could, I knew I could. So, did you spot what the important ingredient is? The important ingredient is hard work, or putting in a big effort. Let's talk about that more together. 
All right, let me show you how important this ingredient of hard work and putting in a big effort is by showing you some cakes. Because, well, I like cake. Let's have a look at this first cake. It looks like there's something wrong with it, doesn't it? It doesn't look like this second cake, which looks really delicious and soft and fluffy. I wonder what it is that makes this first cake different to the second cake. Well, it's missing an important ingredient. It's missing self-raising flour. You see, without the yeast of the self-raising flour, the cake is not going to get as soft and fluffy and delicious as the second cake. It's just going to stay hard and rocky. We can see with these cakes that it's important to use the right ingredients because then you will be able to produce a successful and delicious cake. Just like this, the ingredient of hard work and putting in effort is necessary for us to achieve success. But it must be mixed with one other very important ingredient. I wonder what that is. Let's have a look at a maths equation. I know, maths right, so we can understand this a little bit better. If we make this look like a maths equation, it will look something like this. Hard work multiplied with time equals success. What this means is that sometimes, in fact many and most times, when we face a new or difficult task, we may not succeed the first time around. This is because our hard work, our efforts, need to be repeated over and over. This takes time. It's a little bit like learning a musical instrument. In fact, just the other day I was speaking with my 11 year old son about this. He is learning guitar. We were listening to a really cool song called Danger Zone. And he said to me, Mum, I want to play that song. And then he said, but I don't want to have to put the effort in to learn that because that sounds hard. He wanted the end result, but he didn't want to put the effort in to achieve that same result. Does that sound familiar to you? It does to me. You know, even as an adult, there are some things that I just wish I knew how to do now. I don't want to have to read the book. I don't want to watch the YouTube tutorial or follow the cake recipe. That takes too much time and effort. But we know that success only comes when we make the small and consistent efforts that are going to be helpful to achieving the outcome. Success comes with taking the time to repeat those efforts over and over. But you know, it's not always about repeating the same thing over and over. It's about repeating the same many different things that are what the task requires. Just like my cake needs a certain amount of ingredients, to achieve your goal, you need to be putting in effort to all of the small little tasks that will build up to achieving the final goal. Let me show you what I mean with my little cool Lego dog. You see, this dog was made up of small bricks with screws to hold the bricks in place. The way the dog was built was layer by layer from his little feet up to his ears. With each layer of bricks that went on, I needed to do a layer of screws to hold the bricks in place. It was time consuming and I felt like I was doing the same thing over and over, which I kind of was. What was really happening though was something was getting built and at the end of all of my efforts I had built something that I was super proud of. I needed to put both the bricks and the screws together for the dog to be built and I needed to do it from the bottom up layer by layer by layer. You see every task has a particular amount of small tasks that need to happen for it to be a success. It is those things that you need to put your time and your effort into. Maybe you think that these small efforts are not really doing anything. Maybe it's not fun to do the same thing over and over. But you can see that these small steps are actually the most important. These steps are what leads to success. Listen to this quote. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated day in and day out. Thanks, Robert Collier. Let's listen now to a story about a young woman named Adurne who became Adventurer of the Year in 2011. 
She took a bunch of small steps that led to some unexpected success. Let's watch it together now. Growing up, Adirne Pasaban was a true mountain girl. She loved to walk, run, and climb up the rocky peaks near her house in the hills of the northern Basque country in Spain. She adored the feeling of climbing higher each time and looking back at the tiny houses that dotted the valley below. By the time she was 14, Adirne had joined a mountaineering club and was already climbing with adults. As a reward for her hard work, Adirne was chosen for the adventure of a lifetime to climb a 3.7 mile peak in South America. This experience made her realize that she wanted to become a professional mountain climber. So she started working in her parents' restaurant to save money for her expeditions. When she wasn't mountain climbing, she was competing in triathlons to increase her core strength and endurance. Swimming, cycling, running, Adirne did everything she could to prepare her body for the toughest challenges. Adirne became a world-class climber and even managed to climb the world's highest peak, Mount Everest. Yet, when she finally pulled her tired body to the top of the mountain, there were no hugs or celebrations. She took a quick picture with her team and then climbed back down. She was so focused on putting all her efforts into the climb, she didn't have any energy left for celebrating. A big part of mountain climbing is being able to cope with the high altitudes. The higher you go, the thinner the air becomes, which makes it much more difficult to breathe. Many climbers bring oxygen tanks to help them breathe on their trek, but not Adirne. She was determined to become the first woman to climb all 14 of the world's 4.9 mile plus peaks without using oxygen tanks. Through years of hard work and continuous effort, Adirne managed to climb 13 of the peaks. There was just one left on her list, Mount Everest. Before Adirne set out for Everest, she put together a team of experienced climbers. Together, they spent many months training to prepare themselves for the journey. Once they had prepared and practiced in every way possible, they set out on their trip. Adirne and her team had just one day left until they reached the top of Mount Everest. When suddenly, two members of the team became ill. Adirne was the team leader, so she paused the expedition to make sure her teammates could rest and receive extra oxygen. Adirne was left with a difficult decision. Should she continue climbing to set the world record? Or should she stop and help her teammates? Adirne was so close to the peak that she could see other climbing expeditions reaching the top. Adirne had to decide what was more important, keeping her team safe or achieving her personal goal. Adirne decided to focus all her efforts on saving her teammates. The two sick climbers were helped down the mountain and taken to safety. Adirne's decision to turn back meant that she did not achieve the world record, but she did something much more important. She saved her friends. When Adirne and her team made it back to base camp and everyone was safe, they thought that the hard work was over. But what happened next turned out to be one of the most significant events in Adirne's mountaineering career. As a team of fellow climbers descended from the summit, word spread that they too were in trouble. Adirne was still in good health, so she was able to help with the rescue. 
For the next 48 hours, that's two whole days, they struggled to help the team get back down. One of the climbers was badly injured and was struggling to move. As Adurne and the other mountaineers guided them to safety, they waited patiently to hear about the injured climber. Adurne has never forgotten the moment when one of the rescue party shouted into his radio, He's alive! Adurne hadn't known it at the time, but everything she had prepared for, all the years of training and hard work she had put herself through, had been leading up to this very moment. The disappointment she felt when she had to abandon the climb now seemed like a distant memory. She realized that all the hard work she had put in had now been put to a different use. To help save the lives of the climbers stuck on the mountain. After many years of climbing the world's highest peaks, Adurne remains an ambitious climber that puts all her efforts into every expedition. Her new goal is to cross the Himalayan mountains by foot and she also dreams of one day reaching Antarctica. The mountains will always hold a special place in Adurne's heart because they taught her to value the gift of life and the beauty of nature. And no matter how high she climbs, the mountains remind her that there are endless opportunities to explore the natural world. Adurne continues to reach for new heights every day and always takes care of her teammates. I wonder, what is it that Adurne did to work towards her mountain climbing skills? Well, she practiced climbing. She did activities that built her core strength and her endurance so she could go on and on and climb many, many steps to reach the top of a mountain. What new goals did Adurne set after she achieved her first goal? Well, she wanted to climb more peaks, didn't she? And she eventually became the first woman to have climbed the 14 highest peaks without an oxygen tank. That's pretty special. What happened when Adurne was near the top of Mount Everest for the second time? Well, her teammates became sick, didn't they? And she made the decision to go back down the mountain with them to make sure that they were safe. Do you think that Adurne thought that her second attempt to reach the top of Mount Everest was a failure? I don't think so. I think she quickly realized that she found success in something else that was just as important as reaching the top of Mount Everest. What are some goals that you have that you think is going to take a lot of work? And think, what small steps do you think you're going to need to take to see that success? Now, as you're thinking about those small steps that you might need to take to achieve your goal, I want to do an activity with you. It's called the Big Brain Backpack. Here's what we're going to do. Imagine with me that we're going to be climbing Mount Everest together. We're going to take an adventure, just like a Adurne. Now, here's my backpack. Here's my Adventure Time backpack. Inside of it are all of the medical supplies and food that I'm going to need for my journey. All of that stuff is taken care of. But what is missing are the things that will help my big brain stay strong, happy, healthy and positive throughout my journey. I have with me here some possible things that I can pack in my big brain backpack that is going to help my brain along this journey. Come and join me as I pack this big brain backpack. All right, so I've got my backpack ready to go. Now these things that I can pack, what have I got? I've got this here. This is a picture of my destination. We can see the mountain and we can see, let's just say that that's me walking the road towards my mountain. So I have an idea of where I'm going. I have the, the goal in mind. This is my end focus. So remembering where I'm going is really important. Now here's a picture of my dog, Masala. Masala makes me happy. When we're taking a journey 
and uh, trying to achieve a big goal, it's really helpful to have some things in our mind that keep us happy, things that help us to feel motivated, things that make us feel good. All right, what else have I got here? I've got a picture of a rock climber. He is taking small steps to reach the summit of the rock. It's really important to remember when we're taking a big journey that small steps are the most important. All right, and I've got here the words, go for it. Here are some encouraging words that I'm going to give myself as I am making my journey up to the top of Mount Everest. Go for it, you've got this, you can do it. Just like the little engine at the start, I think I can, I think I can, I know I can, I did it. These are all some really encouraging words that we can use. And finally, I have got a big bunch of balloons. As I'm taking my journey, I'm thinking about the small steps. I'm thinking about the things that make me happy. I'm thinking about my destination, but I'm also thinking about what I'm going to feel like at the end of my journey. I am going to be celebrating. I'm going to be partying. I might even be eating some delicious cake. Whatever it is, think about what's happening as you journey, but also think about the end goal. Think about how it's going to feel when you reach the end of it. So as you think about some of the challenges that are ahead of you, maybe you can pack a big brain backpack as well. Remember that success comes with hard work, so our effort multiplied with time. It's taking the small steps that together will achieve your goal. And remember that doing those same small steps consistently is what helps produce the final result. Now, as you're packing your bag, think about some of these important things to pack in it. Positive words. Think about some words that are going to encourage yourself. Have in your mind the things that will motivate you, inspire you, encourage you to keep going. Another thing you can pack is things that energize you. Just like my picture of my dog, Masala. Pack things in your big brain backpack that help you smile on your journey to success. Always remember to pack in your backpack the reason for tackling this goal. Why are you doing it? Remember the why and that will help motivate you. Also pack in your backpack the feeling of what is it going to feel like when I achieve this goal? Start dreaming about the big celebration. Have the goal in your mind. Think about how good it will feel to achieve your goal. All right, well, I have had fun adventuring with you today and I look forward to seeing you on another Big Life Journal. See you later, guys.